Here's a wealth building model that I don't know that a lot of families understand, whether it's a family office, whether it's an individual with a large uh, lump sum of money. Uh, they don't see the opportunity that's there in the foundation. And I'm going to try to explain that to you here. I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. Now, first off, I'm not your lawyer. I'm not your family office manager. I'm not your financial advisor. So the model that I'm going to share with you today is based on my understanding of how the foundation model works. So for ex example, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Clinton Foundation, what are those organizations able to do? And based on the structure of that kind of organization, how does it help the owner make money or, or at least preserve wealth? I'm going to share with you high level ideas and concepts that you want to review before you take action. Remember, this is just a 15 minute long podcast that gives you ideas and concepts about wealth building. But if you're a high income individual that has a high net worth, so you maybe have a million in the bank, two million in the bank, even $10 million in the bank, establishing a foundation around a passion of yours is an excellent way to turn over your money and turn it into wealth. Now, understand this fully, that when you create a nonprofit or a foundation, your money contributed to that foundation is no longer your money. The money has been transferred into the trust or the foundation or the nonprofit. I'm going to use the word foundation here because the two practical examples that I mentioned, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Clinton Foundation, are known foundations. The actual structure, again, you'll work with a lawyer. The key here to understand is that you can transfer your wealth into the structure. Could be a charitable, a remainder found. You know, there's a lot of structures. But you transfer your funds into the structure, taking a tax benefit today. Sometimes it's 50% of your income. Could be 100% of your income. But the assets then transfer into the foundation. And then the foundation forwards a mission. Now, this mission can be closely related to what you'd want to do anyway. So, for example, um, and I'm being sarcastic here, the Clinton Foundation serves the needs of Bill and Hillary Clinton. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation helps with vaccines and different technologies and different things that they want to do. Your foundation can be for the preservation of you know, certain types of cats. It doesn't matter what it is. It just has to be a legitimate organization that is helping something specific and, you know, for, for uh, it could be a land grant, uh, it could be buying up land to build ecological uh, landscapes in beautifying uh, nature. It doesn't really matter as long as it is a legitimate nonprofit or passion project of, your, of yourself. Now, remember, these are things that you'd be doing anyway. The foundation gives it structure. The foundation gives it purpose. The foundation gives it certain tax benefits. Now, what are those tax benefits? First off, any money donated to the foundation for the mission of the foundation is now a, um, you know, it's not yours. The money's never yours. The money is actually for that cause. Now, as a trustee or as a board member or as somebody who does work in that foundation, the foundation can choose to pay you a nominal salary or a some kind of stipend. Now, Let's say the organization is acquiring land for agricultural use. So the foundation itself is an, ag is an agricultural entity. It's doing training programs. It's operating a farm. It's doing uh, CSA programs. It's educating the public about food deserts. It's educating the public about good eating and good health. It brings in chefs and has events and teaches people you know, how to choose seasonal foods when it grows. This is a legitimate foundation that is providing for the community something specific. So it can accept donations. It can accept grants and other types of, you know, somebody can grant it land to grow, to grow on. You or others you know can contribute money to the foundation. The foundation then purchases additional land to expand its mission. So maybe it's a foundation that has a historical element and it's preserving a historical building. Everyone who contributes to that understands clearly that the foundation is, is restoring the building 
and your books are open so they know exactly how much you're getting paid to either live into the live into the property or that you're paying contractors to do work on the property or you're paying for assets that are associated with the property so whether it's land and you're buying land to farm on or it's a building and you're buying furniture and things that go into the building um, either way it's on mission it is within the framework of the organization and it is clearly transparent to the donors and contributors. Now, why do some people set up foundations? Well, first off, a lot of corporations set up foundations in order to lower their taxes. So this big corporation pays the foundation a certain amount of money every year. It might pledge, it might do matching funds, it might do a, a lot of different things. The corporation lowers its taxes. The foundation gains money for the particular uh, mission. Now, Usually, the owner of the company is also the owner. They're not you're really the owner of the foundation. A foundation is a public trust. It's a public organization. Now, again, when I say foundation, I could it could mean nonprofit. It could mean trust. It could be charitable trust. There's a lot of different structures. Talk with your attorney and your CPA specifically for that. My point being is who defines how much money the corporation pays the foundation. Who defines what the foundation does and how does it spend its money? And then ultimately, who benefits from the activities? Well, in many cases, the person who has the corporation or has the high net worth or has the, the money decides where the money goes, whether it be the donors to the foundation or it be the, the person who establishes the foundation. The foundation itself is built on mission and it benefits primarily the public. Okay, this is very important. It primarily benefits the public. Let's say 80% of that is benefiting the public. You're on mission, mission and you're teaching people and you're helping them get access to good quality food. Or you have a historical location like Williamsburg, Virginia, and you're restoring buildings that are now open to the public. You've got the Ronalda estate, for example. You've got the Biltmore estate, for example. Now, there are people living in these locations that have their, these foundations paying for the maintenance and repair, but they're not the primary benefactor. The benefactor is the public. The benefactor is the shared history. The benefactor is the environment. Do you see where I'm coming from here? So the individual who decides where the majority of the money comes from when a foundation starts up is also the individual who's managing the foundation but not necessarily the person that has maximum benefit from the foundation. And what's interesting about this is that if you were to do it another way, so let's say you have a foundation that has, it's worth 100 units of value. You get 20 units of value and the public is getting 80 units of value. If you were to take money from a business to purchase that same unit of value, the 20 units of value, and you did it as salary, you receive it as salary, and then you go buy the units of value, it would cost you more gross salary than to donate that percentage to the foundation and receive the same 20 units of value. But if you paid yourself and bought the 20 units of value, you wouldn't be delivering any external public value. So you'd get 20% and they'd get 0%, the public, the people you serve. Now, you could be serving those people through your for-profit organization, and that's fine. Now, the for-profit organization, though, has to increase the amount of gross revenue it produces in order to get the same amount of benefit because it is only getting revenue through the service of customers, where the foundation can also get revenue through other corporations that want to lower their taxes, other rich and wealthy families who want to make their money uh, work in a worthy cause, and general donors. So the foundation model actually serves the public good better because you're going to ask the question, how is this legal that you can, you know, put money in an organization, lower your taxes, and then receive benefit from the organization? And it's legal because with the foundation model, the general public benefits far more 
than the individual who is starting the foundation. Because remember, a foundation requires regular bookkeeping. It requires uh, fundraising campaigns. It requires a lot of other activities. Now, most of these activities you're going to hire out. You're going to hire somebody to write your fundraising letters. You're going to hire somebody to audit your books. You're going to hire somebody to do this work. So again, you are now, you're not doing less work, but you're getting a, a benefit. So for example, you want to purchase property. If you raise money in the foundation to purchase the property and purchasing the property is on mission for the foundation and will benefit the people the foundation serves, then you can raise the money. Let's say you raise $400,000 and the property costs $400,000. Now you've acquired the property and you've increased the total pie. So the public gets 80% of the benefit and you're getting 20% of the benefit. The difference is the pie is bigger. So if you bought the property directly, your 100% is the same size as the 20% that you'd have within the organization. Now, why is that? Well, because you'd have to manage the property, pay for it out of pocket. You don't have any tax breaks or deductions. Uh, you don't have any benefit uh, or upside of having the uh, additional customers or, or the, the people who are you're serving in the organization. You don't have the goodwill and publicity of being a, a nonprofit that's doing good in a community. You don't have a lot of the other values. So you end up with the land that you paid full price for and no extra value. Now, if you purchase that land through a foundation and you've got four programs a year that run on that piece of land, so they might be nature walks, educational programs, uh, agricultural projects, internships, they might be other things. Now you have the benefit of developing a community around this land. You can still hike on the land. You can still farm the land. You can still direct what's done with the land. But you now have these additional people who then feed the pipeline of either workers on the property or workers with your organization. Uh, because if you, you own the company that comes along, you also feed the pipeline of having the external benefit to the community, which is publicity. So you raise your status in the community. You raise your status in the organization. But you also have the added benefit that the pie can be increased in size because somebody can donate or, or leave in trust other land to multiply what it is that you're doing, assuming you're delivering sufficient value. Does this make sense to you? See, I used to live near Williamsburg, Virginia, and many of the foundations that were managing Williamsburg and the different sites around Williamsburg could actually receive historical artifacts, historical property, and they would go into there. Now, there weren't necessarily people living there because once your foundation matures, you're no longer going to have any direct benefit. That 20% is going to decrease over time. So, for example, when you die, the foundation is independent of you as an individual, and that foundation may run for generations. Now, the Clinton Foundation, if you weren't aware of this, paid Chelsea Clinton, the daughter of Hillary Clinton, about $122,000 a year to work for the foundation. Now, again, it is transparent. It has to do legitimate work. It has to do work on mission, but it needs people to do that work. So you can hire yourself. You can hire your children. You can hire uh, just regular people in your community. And as long as the criteria is maintained, you now have a multiplier of value. So let's say you're an individual employee. You work for a giant corporation and you decide you want to lower your taxes by contributing to a foundation or nonprofit to which you own. It's a passion project. You'd be doing it anyway, whether or not you had the foundation or not. But now you're contributing to this organization and you set those organizations up as, quote, matching funds, meaning any outside contributor contributes to the organization, you're going to contribute an equal amount. Now you have a matching funds program. You can syndicate the matching funds program by, by offering that as an option to other people because you can't offer benefits to yourself that are not available to other people. Remember the 80-20 model. Now some nonprofits, by the way, are 65 and meaning 65% of the money that comes in goes to overhead and administration and very little goes to the mission. But I'd like you to have an ethical foundation that's actually on mission because it gives you the multiplier. If you're not aware of my programs, we talk about charitable marketing, we talk about leveraging nonprofits, and we talk about the public relations side of this kind of interaction, then go do some homework there because if you are taking less and you're giving the public more or a segment of the public, 
it is possible to establish a foundation that serves a small group of the public rather than the mass public in general. Um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, for example, it serves the public, but it primarily serves the people closest to Bill and Melinda Gates. And this is not any conspiracy or anything like that. That's how foundations work. The Rockefeller Foundation. Now, you don't have to be one of these big families in order to do this because there are foundations in your community that take care of historic buildings. There are foundations in your community that raise money for worthy causes, animal shelters, and such, where the owners live on property. So technically, their housing expenses are covered. Now, it's not completely free. They do usually have a rent agreement with the foundation, so they contribute all their assets to the foundation. The foundation is on mission, is auditable, has a board of directors, is doing good work, but ultimately they're paying $100 a month to live on the property. Now again, if you were doing this with your money directly and there wasn't the structure, the legal structure that's there, you wouldn't have the multiplying value of being able to do fundraising, being able to serve the community, and being able to have the good and positive publicity that a foundation brings. Now again, this has been meant as a high-level overview. The foundation or the structure is a vehicle to convert your assets into immediate benefit for you, could be tax benefit, but also a long-term benefit for the people that are served by the foundation, so society in general. So again, the, the structure is very important. We talk about this a lot. A lot of folks on the, on the mailing list are making 200000 a year, $500,000 a year, and that they're, they're paying the government, which is a structure, by the way, they're paying the government enormous amounts of taxes. And in some cases, they believe that's the right thing to be doing. But is that government doing the best with those tax dollars? Is the is your state agencies or these other organizations doing what is right and what is necessary and what you see needs to be done in your community? And in most cases, they're not because they're basically spending someone else's money. So there are vehicles in place, such as a foundation, Again, it could be a nonprofit, it could be a foundation, it could be a church, it could be a charitable trust, it could be a lot of different structures, but we're going to use the word foundation in general. That foundation could specifically help local organizations, can specifically help students that need scholarship. It could specifically help the organizations that you want to help most. And what's valuable about this is now the government doesn't need to help those people as much, and the government has less demand on your tax dollars and overall can lower tax rates. I know that's kind of a joke because government doesn't lower taxes and um, they just promise to charge corporations more in taxes, which corporation really doesn't pay any taxes because they pass it along to their customer. But can you see what I'm talking about here? The big picture is that your foundation is specific. Your foundation helps specific people and is on mission. And your foundation can be an excellent vehicle to convert your income into wealth. Now, the final question. If the foundation is not legally you, is that wealth really yours? Well, if you only look at wealth in the perspective of financial gain, then the foundation will make you poor, okay? Because you're, you're not going to have any physical assets. On paper, you will have given all your money to charity. You will have lived on minimal uh, living because, again, if you've got a giant mansion that you've, you know, the Biltmore Estate, you can't live in the entire Biltmore estate. You can only live in a small part of this estate, but that's okay because you have the means to travel or you have, you know, you have the benefit of enjoying and seeing how well people are enjoying the estate and the history and the, and the background. Um, but on paper, you will not be wealthy anymore from a financial perspective. But if you're able to multiply the value of the good deeds you're doing, so for example, in the food desert, if you're able to measure and reduce the dependency on uh, fast food and increasing people's opportunity to eat food at home. So the measures are showing that you're creating value, that people are growing more gardens in their backyard, they're eating better food. Then you have narrowed the focus of your wealth into helping other people, and that is that's conversion of the financial wealth into social wealth. Now, again, 
this social wealth could include your access to resources, your access to political influence, your access to respect and, and, and recognition in the community, and that's very valuable to a lot of people, and then ultimately a way to pass those rights and benefits to your children without paying taxes. So you can end up with a foundation that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars or even a few millions of dollars and pass that along to the next uh, to the next generation. Now, if the next generation is not interested in following the rules and regulations and doing what's necessary to provide the maximum good to the beneficiaries of the organization, then you can have that organization just run off on its own because it will have board of directors and leadership and such. It's not the easy route, but it is a consistent route to convert your passions and your uh, desires upon society into reality while still benefiting yourself. You would be giving the money to charity rather than giving it to the government. You would be uh, helping individuals in a structured way and then ultimately gaining the benefits of financial wealth without having it uh, on your books as a liability. If you want to ask more questions about this, I've done a few programs about the, the power of foundations. I've done a couple deep drop dives into larger foundations, including some of the things you might not expect. Uh, where, So, for example, um, if you're doing speaking on behalf of the foundation, a lot of those speaking fees go to the individual doing the speaking, not the foundation itself. And then when they take some of that money and give it to the foundation, the speaker is actually getting a tax break. Uh, there's also the benefit of the leverage of foundations to help corporations. So sometimes you have associations or foundations that are based on a very narrow scope of audience, which could be a, a, a certain industry of corporations. Um, and, and it's just an amazing thing to do. Now, you again, you want to talk with your CPA or your lawyer before you set anything up like this. And again, this is just a short podcast. So I, I do expect your questions to come in at www.sustainablewealthsecrets.com. A foundation is an excellent way to help people to uh, forward a, a mission or activity and ultimately give you the benefits of financial wealth, even though you on your books have little or nothing to show for it. It's a, an interesting concept, hard to explain, easier to demonstrate, but I'll see you in the next podcast. And I hope you'll uh, join us by subscribing so that you can continue to receive these benefits and transform your income into wealth.